Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So few days back, I uploaded a analysis video where I discussed about how the pattern of CSI net exam is changing with time and what are the things that you can do to cope up with that particular changes and you can be a part of this highly competitive exam. And uh, if you are preparing for the next CSI December exam or the upcoming CSI net exams, then this is something which you have to take care of. And in that video, I discussed about that book reading is now very important. Of course, I got a lot of comments over there that it is not possible to read books like complete book and uh, like for the limited time, of course, that is true. But the thing is, you have to understand that I'm not telling you to read the entire book word by word. Okay, there are certain chapters, there are certain topics which require book reading. Now, by book reading, it is not just like you are just reading a book just like a novel or something okay book reading means you are reading a book and you are making notes from that that's how a proper book reading academic book reading works okay now i don't have to explain again the importance of reading books because you might have already seen if you have given the previous cs and exam and in case if you have not given the exam you can just see the question paper and you will find that there are many questions which has been asked directly from the topic and in this video, I'll be talking about inorganic chemistry, uh, getting like looking upon the response which I get from this video, I'll make another video for organic and for physical chemistry also. But I think it is very, very, very important to discuss for inorganic chemistry. Okay. So yeah, if you just look upon inorganic co chemistry questions from the previous exam from the June 2024 exam, you will see that there are questions which are not like usual previous years questions like if you see the questions back before that i mean from 2023 2022 you will see that the pattern of question is quite similar it is similar to what has been asked five years back or just a little bit modification over there uh, like that type of questions were asked for example if i just tell you one of the example there was a question on 18 electron rule and now every year it was very simple question and it was very scoring question students were easily getting marks out of it if they just know how to apply 18 electron rule correctly to solve a question but this time they have asked the exceptional case over there okay they have asked a condition where uh, the hepticity of the complex changes okay and they have asked this 18 electron rule in the form of hepticity and uh, that's what that was one of the question which was a matter of discussion among the student and that is because now they are not focusing upon usual type of question they are not looking upon similar type of question which they have already asked they are changing it and to to come up to that particular level to be able to answer such questions you have to read books okay and again i'm telling that you don't have to read entire books so that's why i'm making this video focusing entirely on inorganic chemistry i'll be telling you different books for uh, like which are easy difficult and which are average okay i will be basically telling you two types of book one are one which are easy to read one which are difficult to read or which are having more examples and the other things related to that what is the benefit of a certain book and i'll also be telling you about certain topics which require book and topic wise books okay so you don't have to read book for entire uh, inorganic chemistry see the syllabus if you will see for inorganic chemistry the highly weightage or the topics which have most weightage is coordination chemistry and organometallic compounds apart from these there is one more that is main group elements that also has some weightage into it but the highly weightage topics are uh, coordination chemistry and organometallic compounds okay i should also include inorganic spectroscopy because that is one more topic which is quite similar to or when you study organometallic compounds there itself you study about the uh, ir frequencies of metal carbonyls and uh, nmr how the nmr changes for metal carbonyl some extra things which you have to cover is like mosbor spectroscopy uh, which also is a part of uh, like which also you study in organometallic compound but apart from that these are certain things which you have to understand then a general uh, like spectra which is dd transition that you study in coordination compound so coordination and organometallic you study in detail that covers itself the inorganic spectroscopy as well these three topics coordination chemistry organometallic compounds and uh, inorganic spectroscopy which actually is a part of both of them so these three are the one which are having high weightage and that's why it becomes important to read book at least for these topics okay now there are various different books okay which you can follow for all of them i'll just name few of them and i'll suggest you that these are having good references or good examples 
and how you can go through that okay so let's start for coordination chemistry so there is a book by uh, james e hui if you have already read it or if you know about that so there is a book by pearson publication it's a uh, inorganic chemistry by james e hui and that books that book is not a easy book i would say okay that's my personal opinion because i have read that and i found that the language of the book and the way how the things are explained the, the book is entirely like i would say it's one of the best books for coordination chemistry but the language it's not that easy to understand in one run okay if you read it once you might feel you might get confused with the terms and with the things which are explained over there so for that sake we have a easier version of that and that is a coordination chemistry by ajay kumar okay so if you follow any of these book okay you, if it's up to you if you want to follow james e hui you can follow that if you want to follow uh, ajay kumar you can follow that but the thing is that you when i say book reading it's not like you are going to open the book and you are going to read introduction chapter one by word everything okay it's not like that a, a better way of approaching a book or a better way of reading the book is daily you have to uh, finish certain topics from that book and you have to make notes of that just short notes and when i'm telling making notes i don't recommend you to highlight in the book okay that that is something which i don't like personally like uh highlighting in the books it's important to write them down okay so when you write certain things let's say you have you are following ajay kumar and you started uh, coordination chemistry and you got certain points which you already might be knowing okay so like you let's say you started studying valence bond theory and uh, in valence bond theory you got to know certain points certain exception cases now the things which you already know you don't have to worry about that but the thing where you got to know that okay this is something which is new and that i have never read it or i might have not read it somewhere or i have not heard about it take out your notebook make a star point and write that down when you write certain thing from that particular book uh, it will go into your mind by two memories okay one will be your verbal memory because you will be reading it so your mind is reading along with that and second will be visual memory because you are writing it so your mind is also seeing that thing and it, it goes in the through the motor nerves and it stays in your mind for a longer time okay that's the that's the point of it so this is how you have to complete a certain topic coordination chemistry is entirely a book by ajay kumar and it's not a very thick book it's 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 a thin book and as i said that if you go to selective topics from this particular book for example if you study uh, the part of molecular orbital theory that is important part which you have to cover from book okay i'm i'm just trying to narrow it down so that it does not look overwhelming to you that i have to read entire book okay that's why i'm narrowing it down these are certain things which you should do apart from that if you are reading the other topics that's plus point okay you should actually do do that also but just to encourage book reading i'm just selecting up certain topics and narrowing down the things for you okay so you have to read uh, molecular orbital theory definitely you have to understand that that uh, and read the book and try to understand that what approach the uh, the the a writer or the author of the book is trying to say, tell you that how these molecular orbitals are formed how these transitions are made how this low field high field thing happens why this um, why the electron get uh, like uh, paired up okay before bringing up uh, or what's the strong field effect weak field effect so what what's that why these ligands are causing this why uh, like uh, you have a sigma donor ligand or uh, or a pi donor ligand how they are behaving as a uh, strong donor or weak donor okay so what's what's the logic behind it so you have to understand it in that way okay try to resolve the mysteries of certain things okay you might have just memorized okay that okay uh, so and so thing or let's say strong field donors they cause pairing of the electron in the in the in the orbitals d orbital of the metal and then the electrons from the ligand comes and fill you fill the electrons over there but why does that happen what exactly is the thing so valence uh, sorry molecular orbital theory is the ad advanced version which explains you all these things and then charge transfer uh, you have to study charge transfer spectra you are having ligand to metal charge transfer metal to ligand charge transfer intravalence charge transfer okay uh, and uh, ligand to ligand charge transfer so what are the conditions why and where it happens you have to understand that from the book there are specific videos even i have made videos on youtube but I, again i'm telling that the book the videos will give you concise information they are going to tell you everything in let's say 20 30 minutes but the book is going to give you an overall approach a overwhelming approach which is going to tell you certain more things certain more examples certain more topics certain more points which probably you might not get in the video 
so yeah so i was telling you about important po important topics which you have to cover from uh, coordination chemistry you can follow either um, ajay kumar or james c hui any of these okay for that sake you also have misler and tar that's also a good book for coordination chemistry you can follow that also there are many good examples in misler and tar so it's entirely up to you choose one book and start following that and this is how you are going to do so uh, molecular orbital theory charge transfer spectra then you have to study orgel diagram tanabe sukhanu diagram okay these two topics are very important and you should do that then the reaction part the reaction mechanism part of coordination compounds how the different type of reaction mechanism outer sphere mechanism inner sphere mechanism how does it happens when does it happens okay so that particular part for magnetochemistry if you want to read book it's fine but for that videos i think they are they will be sufficient enough but yeah if you are following if if you have time and if you have bandwidth you can uh, read the book as well so these are certain important points from where you should read book there are they, you will find certain very different type of examples like for vanadium plus 3 complex why you get a shoulder band in the absorption of it that answer is in the dd transition and why does it happen okay so these are the certain things from where you will get questions in exam and these are certain things which contributes your uh, your knowledge your way of understanding the concept so that's why you should go for that okay so i told you three books for coordination chemistry ajay kumar james e hui and misler and tar ajay kumar being the easiest in the language that's what my personal opinion is it's up to you you might feel some other book easy but that's my opinion uh, uh, james e hui is little on the tougher side and misler and tar it's on the average side you can uh, even follow that okay but misler and tar you will have lot of different chapters for different thing and content is huge in misler and tar and that's why it is more detailed as compared to the other two okay so that's about coordination chemistry coming to organometallic compounds okay so when you when you study organometallic compounds there are certain books which are entirely dedicated for organometallic compound again there are book by ajay kumar the book name is organometallic and bio in organic chemistry by ajay kumar so you can follow either that book or there is a specific book which is uh, uh, the organometallic chemistry of transition metal by crabtree okay robert h crabtree so this is also one of the book for entirely dedicated for organometallic compounds uh, then you have uh, a book by advanced in organic chemistry by f a cotton that is also a book you can follow that but i would suggest you to follow ajay kumar or crabtree both of them are very detailed especially crabtree is very detailed book okay and which has specific sections for all the topics and it is very important to study that so for this you what are the things which you have to study in organometallic compound which is must which you should do okay so the first one is your uh, metal carbonyls everything related to metal carbonyls now everything comes in their synergistic effect how the metal carbonyls have a different spectra of them like ir nmr and different uh, and like in which environment like in solid state and in liquid state how their spectra changes so that is something which you have to cover from metal carbonyls metal nitrosyls also if you want to do you can do that then comes your 18 electron rule and the things related to that the application part of 18 electron rule which includes your uh, uh, like uh, heptacity okay then metal metal bonds how to find out metal metal bonds also about ligands which have different uh, like different number of electrons which it which it donates to the metal center when it binds in a different way for example no so in case of linear and bent why does it have different electron donation in linear and bent that is very well explained in both in ajay kumar also and in crabtree also so you can follow any one of them then you have to cover the part where you have uh, uh, the reaction mechanism part okay then you have insertion reaction elimination reaction so cover that particular part also it's not it's just given in 10 or 15 pages in um, crabtree then you have addition reaction and uh, abstraction reaction so nucleophilic reactions are there uh, then you have single electron transfer radical reaction so you have to cover that part also basically the reaction mechanism part of organometallic compounds then homogeneous catalysis this part has very importance a lot of importance from organic chemistry also and from inorganic chemistry both perspective so a lot of uh, catalysis reactions are there organometallic catalysis so cover that particular part also and uh, then you have cluster and uh, compounds so cluster and compounds you will study about uh, wade and mingo's rule 
how do how does they work isolable analogy and how the structure of a complex changes when the ligand is shifted or related stuffs so and then if you will follow uh, crabtree you have organic application also so in that case you will be able to cover organic chemistry part also like the basic part of reagent part of organic chemistry so yeah these are certain things which you have to cover from crabtree and ajay kumar now this was for your organometallic organometallic compound of course there comes your the spectra part i already told you that is something which you have to cover so these two topics are must to be done from book okay and you don't think that i don't have enough time for the exam it's up to you you have to give more time if you want to read book you can just give just try to give half an hour a day okay just give 30 minutes a day apart from other things which you are doing apart from your other stuffs other way of preparation you are if you are following some notes if you are following some classes if you are following some videos keep doing that but apart from that take out 30 minutes extra and try to read book and make notes okay it's not read book and make notes you, and these are the things which you will acknowledge when you will give exam you will see that how it has ha helped you in your preparation okay apart from this as i was telling you that there are other topics also which might require book reading uh, for bio and organic chemistry i would not suggest you to go for book because see bio and organic chemistry is huge and if you will go for book reading it will be like it's not worthy the the weightage is not that high so it's better to follow some video some concise knowledge so that you can if the question comes from there you can you should be able to do that uh same goes for main group elements for main group elements again it's it's a huge topic if you want to follow certain books there is a book by jd lee that you can follow uh, but i won't recommend you to go for that topic unless and until you cover the other ones coordination and organometallic and spectroscopy inorganic spectroscopy so if you have covered these three from book and other things from notes videos whatever sources you have i think you will be good to go for the exam for the csr net inorganic chemistry portion okay so that's all for this video i just thought to make this a detailed video i just wanted to give you an idea about what are the things that you need to do and how you can do uh, that was the main intention for making this video do let me know what you guys think about it and uh, if if this is useful and helpful i'll definitely make videos in the same way for organic chemistry and for physical chemistry as well but as of now this is about in organic chemistry i hope you like the video and i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care if you have any doubts any questions do let me know in the comment section below and uh, before ending just let me remind that we are already running a batch for csn at december 2024 exam and that is a for physical chemistry that is detailed batch for physical chemistry that's called gamma batch and it's on our app also and it is also on our website link to join that batch is there in the description of this video you will get all the classes in like detailed lectures of the classes along with that you also get mock test and also you will get notes of the class so that's how you are uh, going to be prepared for the upcoming exam especially for the physical chemistry portion and uh, that's it from my side for this video see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care